Today, I want you to know that you are not an accident, that you are here because God has purposed you to be here, not just in the house today, but in the life that you are living. One of the things that distresses me and irritates me is hearing people say, I hate Elmira. I hate this area. I hate this region. They say it like this is a bad place. Can I share something with you? Geographical location is still geographical location. One might be a little warmer than the other, but people are people and problems are problems. And God has foreordained you before the foundations of the earth to be at this location at this time for this purpose because Jesus has a plan for your life. And man, if you and I leave before our time is concluded, people will not go to heaven. This is not a game. This is not about religion. This is not about going to church. God's plan is that his kingdom will come and his will will be done. God's plan is that not one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's plan is that Elmira, no matter what they're saying about it, our region, no matter what anybody's saying, God's plan is to bring revival to this region so that there'll be a great outpouring of God's Holy Spirit and that people will be changed for all of eternity. That's why we're here. We're not here to sit in a chair. We're not here to take up with some religious organization. We are here because God's kingdom wants to come. God wants to change people. God wants to save lives. God wants to heal bodies, heal minds, heal souls. Jesus wants to touch your life. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 is a powerful verse. It says, you are the salt of the earth. Turn to someone and say, I'm the salt. Now, get a little attitude in that thing. Say, I'm the salt. Now, that's not enough attitude. You give more than that to your parents. Ready? Say, I'm the salt. Bible says you. Turn to someone and say, me. Say, I am. Shout it again. I am. One more time. I am. I am the salt. That's you. See, right now in this room, it's not about the preacher. It's not about the church. It's about you and I as individuals. God has called every single one of us. I love when God said, uh, you know, Moses said, God, who do I say has sent me? And God said, the I am that I am. Whenever the terminology I am has been disclosed, he is revealing who that individual actually is. You are. I am the salt of the earth. God has called each and every individual in this room to be the salt of the earth. God has planned you. God has purposed you. And sadly enough, there are many that will find the demise in the end of time and realize that they never fulfilled God's purpose for their life. And man, time has flipped by, and now they're standing before the judgment of the Lord with absolutely nothing being accomplished. But I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that this house will be a house of power, that this house will be a house of salt, that this house will be a house of authority, and that this house will rock this region and kick the devil's butt. Say amen. We are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. I love what it says in the message. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of the earth. Salt plays a huge part in your life. How many of you know that? How many of you like salt? I'm from Boston. We like salt. We like salt and we like butter. My wife yells at me all the time, too much salt, too much salt. Never too much salt. My cousin say amen. Salt plays a huge part in our lives. Salt is made up of two elements. It's made up of sodium and chloride. Sodium, now listen, this is my D in high school was in chemistry. Who got the A in chemistry? Hit him. Hit him. Sorry. chemistry. So I'm going to read to you what sodium is. I'm going to read to you what chloride is because I want you and I to understand who we are. We, Jesus didn't make a mistake when he, when he said this. Jesus did not misspeak and, and, and just say a statement to say it. When God says something, there's a reason. When he says something, we've got to understand why we're here. If you are here just to suck air, to make a few babies and die, somebody's making a lot of bucks. You are here because there is nobody else like you. 
You are here because somebody needs your life. You are here because God foreordained before the foundations of the earth. He said, let there be and there was. He said, I formed you in your mother's womb before I ever said those things. I knew who you were going to be. I have a plan for your life. I have a purpose for you. And I have a people for you to reach. Salt is this, sodium. Enables the transmission of nerve impulses around the body and regulates the electrical charges moving in and out of the cells that control taste, smell, and tactical process. It also helps our muscles, include, including the heart, to contract. Chloride is the key for the digestion process. It preserves the acid-base balance in the body and absorbs potassium. Chloride also helps blood carry carbon dioxide from respiring tissues to the lungs. When you have insufficient salt, muscle weakness, cramps, and other body functions cannot perform in their vital manner. I want to twist this, and I want you to see what Jesus was saying. You and I are the salt of the earth. Salt literally allows us to live. Where there is no salt, life cannot be. When the church got, has gone into their lethargy, when the church slept into their sleep, when the church went to the position where it was about going to a building and fulfilling a religious obligation and doing a nice things for a few people around the neighborhood, then church became something that was absolutely killing and not saving. The church has slid from being the life-giving process in the community to being something that people sneer at and laugh at and Christians are more taken aback and not lived for but are actually mocked. The reason for this is because the purpose for salt is being lost. The church world is now just surviving, and the church is not growing. I was talking to a gentleman this week, and he said, it's amazing. I'm finding people don't even believe the word of God is true. People sitting in church don't believe the word of God is true. Our society is degradating. Our society is coming to a place of low esteem and really low moral value than we've ever seen before. We kicked God out of schools in the 60s. In the 50s, the greater problem was they were chewing gum in the hallways and maybe cussing a little bit. Now it's carrying guns. Abortion, they're killing millions and millions. How many millions? Nineteen seventy-two, fifty-four million babies have been aborted. We find the the very fabric of of morality is disintegrating within America, and we sit back and we say, what is going on? We need help, but I'm here to tell you, help is not going to come from the White House. Help is not going to come from Albany. Help is not going to come from the local, the local people. Help, and I'll tell you where the fall was, the fall was not from any of those, those places, the fall was from the church. The church stopped being the light of the world. The church stopped being the salt. The church stopped doing their call. And what happened was, all of a sudden, we find now the church is not part of the fabric. And if there is no salt in the body, if there is no salt in the region, then there's only one thing that can happen. The heart will stop and the vital organs will shut down. The problem lies at the threshold of the church. We can be as religious as we want to be, but we are the ones. Come on now. I'm not taking it myself. The body of Christ at large is the ones in America that have slid into this place where the church no longer makes a difference. People could care less what's happening in the building as they're driving by even now. There has got to be a change in the American church. There has got to be a shift even in this house. I thank God for all the souls that have been saved. I thank God for all the miracles and the signs and the wonders that have happened. There have been great healings this year in this house. Thank God. We're going to pray for some more even this morning. We believe in the salvations and the people's lives and that have been transformed and the marriages that have been saved. And man, God has done supernatural things even with deliverance from alcohol and drugs. Thank God for all the supernatural things that he's done. But man, let me tell you something. There are so much more available. Why and how do I know? Because there are seats empty in the house. 
When the church loses eternal value, then we get into gathering what, what collects dust and rusts. When we die, I don't care how much you got when the Monopoly game is over, you don't get to take it with you. Everything we have, listen, one day can be there and the next day it can be gone. When we base our worth, when we base our lives on temporary value, then the church, I'm talking the church now, I'm not talking the world because that's all they have. The only hope they have is to go up in the society. The only hope they have is to be recognized and to do a little bit better maybe next year. But for the kingdom of God, it has nothing to do with what is accomplished on this planet because everything here is temporary and will be gone in the near future. If you've turned 70 years old in the last few period of time, now listen, I'm 46 years old, I'm still a baby, say amen. But I used to make fun of 45-year-olds. Fifty's really old. That was a horrible look there, Sister Savard. Isn't it amazing, though, how quickly time passes? You blink your eyes and your children are being taken down to Florida. Thank God for deliverance. Hallelujah. Sorry, honey. It's amazing to realize how time quickly passes, and yet most of the church is still living in the temporal value mindset to what happens is this, is that the church, they go to church every single Sunday. Actually, the average American now goes to church once every three weeks. And when they go to church, they fulfill something in their life, and then that's it, and they go home. And they stop being the salt, and they stop being the light where God has called them to be. And what happens to America, what happens to Elmira, has nothing to do with the society. It has to do with the church. There was a revival in the 1950s in Elmira that happened in a local church, and God moved in such a manner that literally the bars were closing down and the porn shops closed down. You can look it up online. It's, it's part of the archives. You see, God has not changed. God's passion is that not one should be lost. His passion is that people be saved. And no matter how old or how young they are, whether they're pavilions or whether they're brand new babies being dedicated, God loves people and God has sent his only son to save no matter who they are or what they've done to retrieve them, to grab them, to redeem them, and to let them know I love you with an everlasting love and I'll never give up on you because I am God. The problem is not God. The problem is the church. You see, because God made a plan, and his plan was this. My son is coming home. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, my spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is going to live inside of you, and then you're going to do the work in the will of God. God's only plan, God's plan A is you and me. We, the salt, God's plan was the salt, was for us salt to assault the devil. Was for us to make a difference on this planet. You see, salt plays a massive part in our life. Listen now, salt was used for flavor. How many of you use salt for flavor? You know, you, you get the, you know, the, the, does anybody salt ham? Jesus, help. Deliverance, we do deliverance ministry after can, I, can you imagine? You know, you get your, your mashed potatoes, you know, and you, you, you get your corn, and you got, you know, your, 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 your ham right over here, and you, you get your mashed potatoes, and they're steaming hot. So you, get, you get a scoop of real butter, not margarine. And you slap it in, you know, you've already done your little hole, you know, little tunnel. You slap your butter in your tunnel, and you cover it on up. Come on now, can you identify with me? And, 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 and then you, you, t you take another slab and you throw it on the corn and you kind of mix it together. And, and, and then you take your corn and you slide it over to the mashed potatoes. And, and for those who have issues, you'll be all right. And, and, and you mix it all together. And, and, then, and then you take your, you, where did where it go? And then you take your, your salt and, and you, you start, you, you, oh, yes. And, and you've made almost like a soup. 
And when it touches your palate, woo! It's good. But the salt plays. Have you ever eaten something with no salt? My wife cooks with no salt. And every once in a while, I'll pick it up and start eating. It's like nasty. Where's the salt? Listen, <laughs> I ain't said nothing I ain't said to her. <laughs> salt, salt. Listen, she doesn't eat meat. She doesn't like salt. She doesn't like butter. That's why she's so pretty. And that's why I got a double chin. Glory to Jesus. We use salt to flavor things. And listen, salt is so important that even when you go to the doctors and, man, you've got problem, maybe dehydration, they give you an IV. And it's usually a saline solution, salt solution, helps control your metabolic system. We then, we, we feed our animals salt. And for all the hunters that are only legal and we have no illegal hunters in the house, you might take a salt lick out to near your hunting place and the deer will lick your salt lick. Amen. But we won't talk about that out loud. Fertilize. We fertilize our plants with salt. You know, salt, and what's amazing, too, is salt actually was used as money. In fact, the Romans were, you, were paid, actually, in salt. You ever, anybody ever heard the term salary? Do you know where it came from? It came from the word salt. It actually, it means, it, the word salary came from salarium, which means payment by salt. And you've heard it said, they are worth their wages in salt. Because salt was a way of being paid. See, salt is not just for flavoring to get good flavor out of it. Salt was not just so that we could actually physically live where our bodies will interact and work together and intertwine. But also salt was used as payment. When Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, he wasn't just making a blanket statement or a foolish little word. He was helping us understand what literally he expected us to be on this planet. Salt was used as a preserver. There was no refrigeration back then. So what they would do is they would take salt and they would help and, 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 and mix it with the thing so that it wouldn't decay and the process would stop. Also, salt was used for healing. How many of you know that healing, maybe this is, again, old days, maybe you cut your hand and they would get Epsom salt. How many ever gargle with salt? You ever let it, like, go back too far back? <coughs> you gargle with salt. Why do you gargle with salt? Why do you put your hand in Epsom salt? There's a reason. There's healing within salt. Salt plays such a huge part of our lives. And, and this is what God is trying to teach his church. We've got to get back to who we are. We are the salt of the earth, which means this. We pay, play an intricate part in this world. And when the church no longer has savor, when the church no longer has flavor, it is there to be trod by the foot of men. It has worthlessness. God has looked at his church and he says, you know what? In the majority of churches, nobody is getting saved. In the majority of churches, no one's life is being changed. In the majority of churches, what's happening is it's just a religious action. And God is saying there's got to be a stop for this is the year that Jesus could return. The truth is, is that 2013, Jesus could crack the eastern sky with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. Jesus could come back today and the truth comes down to base process. And that is, have we made a difference? or not? Are we just the church or are we the salt? See, this is, this is interesting because I'm not talking the preacher. Everyone likes to look at the preacher. I'm not talking me because I got to live this thing too. Remember, God deals with me before he ever deals with you. I was down in Florida. I took two cabs to get to the airport. You know, one there when I got back on the way back. Both of those cabbies got some salt. I said, do you know Jesus? What are they going to do, kick me out of the cab? I'm paying them. Start sharing Jesus with them. Well, you know, he said, I go to this Orthodox church. Said, I'm not talking church. I'm talking, do you know Jesus as your Savior? The lady on the airplane. You always put mint in your mouth before you start talking to Jesus. You don't talk about Jesus. You know, you turn and go, hi. Halitosis. 
She's sitting next to me, and I said, you know what? Do you know the Lord? And we start talking. I shared with you a little bit last week how I was to share Jesus with her sitting next to me. She was an airline student getting ready to go overseas. We went hunting the other day. We went goose hunting up north. While we're goose hunting up north, I made sure that I was standing next to the guide. He heard the gospel before the day was over. You see, you and I are not called to suck air. We are called to be the salt. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good, which means this. Every Christian in this room, we should have a testimony that when people get around us, they want to say, you know what? I don't know what it is. Listen, you, I, I, put, I picked on Jody in the first service. I'll pick on her again. Many of you know Jody. She's crazy. No, really, she's crazy. I've got videos of her dancing on the hood of her car with my daughter. Oh, yeah. But Jody, before she knew Jesus, she was an alcoholic by the age of 16. She had already tried to commit suicide twice. She was partying all the time, doing drugs all the time, and doing other things all the time. I want to talk about those. But when she accepted Jesus Christ as her Savior, God changed her life. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God changed her. And now whenever you get around Jody, she can be so irritating because she is so stinking happy. Even when she's yelling at her husband, she looks happy. And people want to know, what is it about you? You see, that's the salt. You and I, we are the people that they should get near and say, I don't know what it is about you, but you're different. I taste something different hanging out with you. I taste something different being around you. We are the salt of the earth. God has called us to be people of difference, not people of the same. We are called to be preservers. Where Listen now, when you're at work, God is using you. Listen, if you're your work should be blessed because you're there. Because you, the son and daughter of the Most High God, you are pointing salt and salt being a preserver even though the business might be struggling at times. The moment you come on scene, mm, the son is here. The God's king is here. God's son and daughter is in the house. I'm blessing because they are there. We are that preserver. We are that flavor. We are the ones that literally keep life going. Listen, what's going to happen in the end times is this. When Christ returns, the Holy Spirit is leaving. And the church is leaving. The church, the salt, the preserver is leaving. And at that moment, it's called the seven-year the seven great tribulation period. The devil can do whatever he wants because there is no restraint. There is no preservation. The salt is gone. How many of you know you're not there yet? How many are not in heaven yet? Some of you think you are. We'll pray for you later too. You're not in heaven yet. You're still on this earth because God's got a plan for you. Because God needs you. Because God has you where you work. God has you where you play. God has you in your family. God has you in the region. Because people need to taste and see that the Lord is good. Because people need to see that God is able to do abundantly above all they could even ask or imagine. Because God needs to be seen as somebody who they can trust and rely upon and have their sins washed away. That when they see him face to face, they don't need to shudder in fear because they are not washed in the blood of Christ and be ready to be cast into the lake of fire. But they'll say, that's my daddy. That's the one who washed me. That's the one who changed me. That's my Jesus right there. You see, God is calling the church to come back to our call. He's calling us to come back to life. And life is this, that you are the salt of the earth. Without the church, this world, this region is damned. It's nothing to do with the drug dealers coming from all over the place to come here. It's time for the church to make a difference. I said it's time for the church to make a difference. It's time for the salt to start preserving. It's time for the salt to start flavoring. It's time for the salt to get in there and start healing the wounds. And the salt is not this building. The salt is you. We 
are not only individuals, but we are collective. But before we're ever collective, we are individuals. And God's plan for you is from everlasting to everlasting. And God needs you and I to stop being so absorbed with our own little world, to be so absorbed with our own little life. Listen now, most of us, our whole world wraps around me. What makes me happy? What will I do that will satisfy me? And the problem when the church gets into that mode, then it's all, everything we're supposed to do now takes back seat. And when it takes back seat, what actually happens? Now, come on now. We're talking the domino effect. When the preserver or the preservation process is not applied to a piece of meat and it is set out, the meat starts to rot. It's not that there isn't salt available to accomplish the task, but it's never applied. And when the church stops applying our purpose and our call, when we start being so absorbed with ourselves and what we want and how we want things accomplished, then we cannot sit back and complain uh, to our government. We cannot complain to our world. We cannot complain to the people of our society and say, yeah, look at it, it's falling apart. No, the reason it's falling apart is because the church is not making a difference. 